Hello everyone, Twitchers. I don't know if we have anyone watching yet. So one of the things we want to do is just kind of chat and uh, and let people join over the next few minutes. So we won't quite get started right yet. We do have Josh in the green room. We can see him, but we're uh, we're not going to quite introduce him just yet. So the point of today is I wrote a blog post last week about how to do native builds for Micronaut, Spring Boot, and Quarkus. And we discovered, well, we'd already known this a, a while ago, but uh, if you do Spring Security set up an OAuth 2 resource server, works great. Uh, if you use our Okta Spring Boot starter, it doesn't. So we're looking to fix that. And I have Brian Demers here. He's one of my colleagues on the Okta Developer Relations team. And he wrote our Spring Boot starter originally. And, uh, and that's why we have him here. So we'll bring up Josh. So welcome, Josh. Hey, good morning. Morning. It is morning. Yeah, it's morning for me. It's noon for you two. I think. Where are it's you? Like two, two, two for me. I'm on the East Coast. I'm oh, in the past me. Yeah, Wait. yeah. You're six hours ahead of people in Hawaii, and they're happy people. So just think about that. <laughs> Reflect that's, on that. I I try to wake up late. I mean, that's the closest I can get. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it wrong. They're we're we're all doing it wrong. Yes. Yeah, I I agree. Except for yeah, so we spent, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we spent some time in Hawaii in February, and my wife, Trish, has to do presentations just like we do as part of her job. And she was waking up for the East Coast at 3.30. So, you know, Hawaii isn't always great. No. But I think her mistake was she, she worked, right? You're not supposed to work when you're in Hawaii, unless you live there, maybe. Yeah, even then, I, I don't know. I mean, if you're in Hawaii, that's probably not the first thing on your mind, even if you live there. No, no. I don't, I don't know a lot of uh, turtles that are just eager to hack on Spring Native. <laughs> not a thing. I am pretty pumped about, uh, for one, learning learning about more Spring Native. So I've done a bunch, I was telling Matt, I've done a bunch with, with Grawl and building native binaries. Uh, but apparently there's some differences with Spring Native. But I, I, in general, I'm super excited for this this technology in Java because I feel like everyone's laughed at us for years that you couldn't build a binary. Now, now we can. <laughs> what, what is the um, link for people to watch? Where should I tell somebody who wants to watch this? Uh, Twitch.tv.octadev or slash octadev. Octadev. Okay. There's probably a, a banner I can put up here at some point. We probably should do that. For all the people watching on Twitch, they can click the link to watch on Twitch. Right. <laughs> so that's not going to do any good. Well, okay. Well, this is fun. It's fun. It's been fun seeing you all. I got to go look at the time. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. We got uh, we got one. That's we Micah. got Mike. Mike is Mike is watching. Uh, we got a troll. He's going to totally uh, troll yeah, us. You know he it's is. All, it's all over. <laughs> Well, hi, buddy. I miss Micah. Oh. So let's yeah, you want to tie right into it. Well, let's give one more minute. Okay. And uh, I got to I'm gonna show. I'm gonna reproduce the problem here. Yes. It's always it's always I'm good gonna, to start with that, or at least talk about it. Or at least show like the example, right? I'll share my screen after I made sure it works. <laughs> Talks amongst yourselves in the meantime. All right, all right. Well, Josh, you're you're in uh, SF or somewhere somewhere over on the left coast, right? Yeah, San Francisco. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a it's summer, so that's why we have cool. We have the gray clouds and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typical, typical, typical uh, summer day over there. Oh yeah. Well, over here, it's it's been raining. It's been nice for the past few weeks, uh, but Where today's are you? been a rainy day. What's that? Where, whereabouts are you? I'm in about the center of New Hampshire. Oh, good gravy! That's that's it's in fun. the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> well, San Francisco is kind of the middle of nowhere if you think about it. I mean, yeah. it's so tiny you, you could easily trip over it and miss it. You know, like it's a little village. Yeah, although the first time I actually worked in San Francisco, uh, I, I had spent some time out there in in just south of the city, but the first time. Um, I was actually staying in SF. 
I was like, I'll just stay a couple miles away from our office. I was in like Fisherman's Wharf, beautiful area. I figured I could walk around after work. Right. It took it took over an hour to get to the office. I I was not prepared for that. Uh, it would have been much much faster to walk the two hours. Maybe I don't know. Uh, it was it was miserable either way. Beautiful but miserable. Yes, yeah, so you came from South San Francisco and you're trying to get to the Fisherman's Wharf. That's no, like no, no. So the first time I actually had to work in the city. Um, so, but still, yeah. There's some inception right. going on here. Okay. So let, All right. I'm gonna just share my screen and show you what's going on here. So, you would. um, I just have this simple like resource server app, right? It's got uh, this for GraalVM because we need to enable HTTPS when we're talking to Okta or uh, or any sort of you know secure issuer. And then we just have a Spring Security, you know, sets it up. And then the changes that I've made from the blog post is you can see application.properties, right? Instead of using the spring security settings, I'm using the Okta OAuth 2 issuer. And then I replace the spring framework OAuth 2 resource server with our starter. And so what our starter does, Brian can probably explain it better, but it basically encapsulates uh, spring's resource server and it's OAuth 2 login. So you can have both already pre-configured and then it does like audience validation and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's a wrapper around Spring Security. So I started up here, I have it running. And if I use, you know, a, a bearer token or an access token with HTTPI, I can uh, talk to it and it'll return my information, right? And so if we were to look back at the project at the hello controller, you can see it's just grabbing the principal's name and that happens to be my my email and so if i was to build this right you can build it two ways and hopefully josh will clarify this uh well not that you want to do mvm package dash p native is one way and i believe you need a a grawl enable jdk for that the other way is a spring boot build image right and that uses docker so you don't need grawl vm i'm going to use the uh the grawl vm way because that's a little faster so if i do package like that it fails all right it gets close with the aot stuff and then it'll eventually spit out an error here ow i i will say uh so i, I poked around oh. this a little bit the error messages are pretty great yeah um, at least they try to punch in the right direction i got to a point where i was utterly confused but that may have uh, likely likely just me and not not the error message i think we figured out the issue like, let's just fix that and see what happens. Well, so I'll stop sharing at this point. And uh, I think. Am I on mute? No, we can hear you. Oh, my buddy is watching and he says, I'm on mute. Is that possible? I think well, it's possible, somewhere. like, what we see here and what happens on Twitch is two different things. So we'll uh, uh, we'll wait for someone else to comment. Hey, Micah, is, uh, is Josh on mute? The, the turnaround <laughs> is like 45 seconds, though. All right, it could take a while for the delay. I'm sorry. I think I misunderstood the message. My friend's watching, but he has me on mute, which is even worse if you think about it, right? Like, what kind of friends? Like, I'm going to turn it on, but definitely not going to listen to that. All right, well, Jay Walter said he can hear us just fine, so we're good. Okay, awesome. my bad. Mea culpa. Okay, let's go fix that bug. I, I know how to help. Uh, we just do what the message says. Like, let's open up that starter. All right. Okay. So I have uh, I got to share my screen again, right? Or did you want to share yours, Brian? Uh, you can share yours. I think I'm already connected to yours, so we're we're okay, ready to so go. I think. See so share. Back to so, here so, and whoop. 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 Yeah, bear with us because we're trying out IntelliJ's new Code yeah. with Me feature. So far, it's been cool. Bear, uh, but but it's new, so. No. Okay. All right. Uh, where, where's where's the error message? So the error is back in this window. Oh, right, 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 right. Because right. this is your example. Right. Yep. Let's go to Octa OAuth 2 auto config. It'll be awesome. This is gonna be so much fun. Yeah. So so I think I think Josh will pick up. So there's some low hanging fruit, and then like I said, I was thoroughly confused after that. Did you already and, get? Uh, there's there's apparently uh, a light mode and there's a whole bunch of like things you can talk about with uh, glibc and uh, all all that all that fun stuff to explain the whys and 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 whatnots right. Sure. 
All right. Uh, I'm not seeing that, Matt. You don't see the Octo uh, 2 oh. auto config? Oh, uh, I got to follow may, you. May, may, no, may, I was going to follow you. Maybe I, that's what I need to do. I'm following you now. Oh, okay. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna start scrolling here. Can you see this? Yep. That's the wrong right. file. It is the wrong file. So the error message. Actually, Matt, switch to. Uh, well, the error message pointed to what class? Octo uh, OAuth two auto config. All right. So that is over here somewhere. OAuth two auto config. All right. So. There's a few things here, right? There is my configuration. I think what it's telling me and Josh fill me in. I need to turn, uh, what is it? Prog proxy. Come on, type completion. No, <laughs> I need to do this on all, all my, all my configurations. No, I, I think that's required anyway. So, what it's saying is that because you're because that's required because that's the default state right now, uh, and by the way, there's some possibility that that restriction will go away, but for now, basically, you've got beans that are invoking each other. You've got a bean method that's invoking another bean method, which is a, a no-no. You need to do parameter injection. Oh so. yes, yes, I uh, I've seen that too. So that is right here. Okay. Uh, yeah. And this this is really just a uh, so so taking a step back. Yeah, I assume this is a general bad practice to begin with. Is that is that fair? Or well, is that not really the case? Oh no, it's it's okay. So, long story short, um, cglib, we use cglib to subclass that configuration class at runtime, and cglib is used to then dynamically create a subclass that overrides the methods, so that when you call OAuth two user service, it does memoization. Basically, it, it intercepts a call. If that one object has already been created, the singleton bean has already been created, it just returns that pre-computed, pre-created bean. Otherwise, it creates it anew for the first time, and then all subsequent calls get the pre-created bean. So with me so far, that's like spring 3.0, 2009 behavior, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's how that works, and it's a bit of a magic trick, and it makes it so that you can call the method a thousand times and still get the same object, the same instance. Well, um, GrauVM doesn't know about cglib proxies, right? We call them AOT proxies. Uh, it doesn't know about dynamically subclassing classes like that. It knows about JDK interface proxies, but not about that kind of proxy. And so we just added support in spring native 0.10.0, right? That just dropped, that just got released so now there is a technical component in Spring Native that you can use to configure an AOT proxy. Basically, we have the ability to tell to tell GraalVM that these this class is going to be dynamically subclassed and it'll look like this because it'll, it'll implement these interfaces in this concrete class, right? Um, but that doesn't have an equivalent in GraalVM itself. There's no like JDK thing we can point to and say this is just like that. It's something that we created, right? It's a and and a lot of frameworks have similar tricks with ByteBuddy or CGNIB or whatever. So there's no standard thing across all these different portfolio projects that are that do this. So we, in Spring Native, we have now a new mechanism called an AOT proxy hint. So this is the first time that Spring Native has a hint that doesn't have an analog in the JSON config files in GraalVM, right? Unfortunately, we haven't actually applied all that magic yet to the business of dynamically subclasses, subclassing configuration classes and creating proxies out of them so that we can intercept the method calls. So for now, it just doesn't work. But like I say, technically, maybe it could work, right? Like now that we have AOT proxies, maybe that's a thing we could do. I don't know. Um, so this isn't a bad practice. It's just because of the limitations of how GraalVM has supported these kinds of use cases and because we just got support for it in Spring Native, which released like a week ago, uh, Spring Native 0.10.0, uh, I would avoid it for now. Yeah. And the alternative so, is just to inject parameters, so it's, right. it's, it's impossible. So, so we should be able to. Whoops! 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 Quartz. I oh quartz. What is it? Yeah. What is that? I helped with the Spring Native integration for quartz, by the way. Qualifier. What? What? what wait. Qualifier. Yep. I want this name here, right? I think it's this one. That should oh, be. Come on! Come on! Let's copy and paste. Ooh, it's a little slower here. Uh, and then it's this big long class here. And 
then whoops 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 what did i do code with me is goofy yeah it's a little it's a little slow oh i need a argument you know it's it's a little long here but and then i can go like this whoops all right did i do it no i didn't you yeah made it there it goes all right it's so a second okay there you go yeah Cool. So that that gets rid of that that's the that dependency. Yeah, but if you do that anywhere else, we need to fix that too. So you know. I think I think that was the only one. But like I said, I, I only looked at this briefly Friday. So. Okay. Well, I guess recompile. Let's retry. I hope you got the the client app, the blog app, set to snapshot releases. Oh, that's when a good you, point. When you well, I think what what you can do here is just you know NVN install, right? Minus and then I can switch it yeah all right let's make this fast right hashtag skip tests <laughs> uh well you can also just do the actual a lot two project right you don't need to do all of them too late wait it's done <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's switch back you're, to this you're, one here. you're absolutely right though that would have made a lot of sense but i i all right so back here what's uh what's the snapshot two one one uh, it is. That's a good question. Let's look. I would assume it's two one one snapshot. Two one one snapshot. Yep. All right. So let's try it again. Back to the sample and fifteen seconds to compile. Normally, like running the test and stuff, it takes like two and a half minutes. So that's oh skip, yeah, skip, skipping the test for the win. <laughs> we're gonna yeah, given our abbreviated time together and the fact that we're doing GraalVM compilation. You're going to appreciate every opportunity to compile <laughs> faster. Okay, OF2, Octa config. These methods are directly invoked met, mar, mar, methods marked bean. OIDC user service. Oh, did I lie? Uh, did, did I is that different it? from the previous one? Uh, that was the same one, right? Am I a liar? Somebody Octa, told OAuth2, auto config. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Build failed. These methods are direct. Yeah, I don't know. Can we go back to the code and look at it? Okay. Let's scroll down. I can barely see. Wait, what if I go to my IDE? Can I drive a little bit? I should be able to. I, I let you in, and then I got to follow you, though, here. Uh, are you sure that's the right? You sure it's installed? Like Octa OAuth two config. Oh, that's a good question. Let's see which which. Uh, make sure this version actually installed here. Installing. Yeah, yeah two one one snapshot. Let's see. Did you uh sure. did you did you rebuild? You might have to do oh, that. I just I did this right. Yeah, that's true. It should work. I yep. can do it clean. People don't yeah. like it when you do MVN clean, though. I got to be honest. I know better, and I still, like, it's been in my brain since, uh, I don't know, almost 20 years at this point. I type clean yeah. way more than I should. And, and I chide myself after I do it, but then I do it again. Bills failed. <laughs> okay. Octa OAuth 2 auto config. Octa or to auto config. And it's already user service. So. I don't know. Doesn't look all that bad to me. I think it, there's something obviously we're we're missing something obvious here. Like what happens if you just RMRF your uh, local M2 uh, for this particular starter? Hey, it's okay. I love that guy. M2 repository. Not everything, just the starter, yeah. Um, Octa. Sure. Yeah, sure. This is this is another trick that I, I'm still amazed oh, is, is, is still install. in the bag of tricks. You did package not install. I did install. Oh. All right, we did install over here. Well, well, I ran it from the code with me thing. Ah, maybe, maybe it's so like I. I mean, I'm running random commands on your computer, so. I don't know. Let's pipe this from 
straight current. We've never done Java code before, friends. This is first time. This is it. First time. We're doing good. Uh, all things well, good. I think it, it would be an interesting code with me feature if it like Brian ran it and it actually installed it on his machine instead of mine. Right. The whole point was that we wouldn't have to do that. So we'll see here. It'd be great if yeah. it had like a clip it clippy thing. It looks like you're trying to, you know, take take advantage of Graal VM native native compilation. Would you like a drink? <laughs> You're going to need it when your build times go through the roof. Mm. All, All right. right. So try it again here. 30 seconds. What was different that time? I think you ran some other. I don't know what you ran. Well, it downloaded stuff. So it yeah. might have, when Brian ran it, it might have ran on his machine. I don't <laughs> know. We'll see here shortly. We will see. This is, this is the other thing, you know, you, I mean, I don't know how much of my time, you know, I spend dealing with like dependency issues. It's, it's you know, and, and I see a lot of logging questions. There's still a lot of people confused about Java logging. Um, it, it's like there's a handful of these problems that are just never going to go away. <laughs> I just let Spring Boot do the logging. I don't I, I, I've, I've forgotten everything related to logging. I have no idea how to do right? it. It's been eight years since I had to care. I don't care. That that's a great that's a great statement right there. Yeah, just let the platform forward it to some you know system log D thing, system log D thing. It'll be fine, you know. It, it seems like we're actually getting somewhere. So I think code with me, like MVN install. If you run it, it does it on your machine, not mine. Which is that's not strange, great. but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Wait, so are we looking at whose laptop are we looking at right now? Mine. Okay. Oh. So and, you, and I'm building the example, right? And it's actually building now. Okay, so, so are you the one running the Maven commands, or who's running the Maven commands? Uh, well, I ran it in order to get it to install locally, because when Brian ran it, it didn't actually seem like it installed. Oh, that's bizarre. That is so confusing. I am <laughs> right. not needing to wait. I mean, if I'm sharing my ID, everything that you do should happen on my computer, right? Yeah. By the way, are you think so. on this? What's that? What are you skipping questions? Are you yeah, skipping? Uh, no, I didn't, but we're already past yeah. those, so. Yeah. Well, no, you're not. Look, it's you know we compile the tests to native code now. Oh, oh wow. That's a that's a thing we do for you, but it does double the compile time. So next time, skip that. Skip okay. test. <laughs> this is one. We got you know more pressing, <laughs> low hanging fruit kind of bugs to fix. Oh, this is the other one that probably happened, but I wasn't building from the ID. But you notice this, like the latest IntelliJ, they don't reload your Maven files for you, so you gotta click this yes. guy. And it, there was like a brief period in time when it reloaded automatically the Maven index, and then right. it, it was like one release, like three years ago, where it just made the CPU crawl. Do you remember that? It was like running Slack. It just yeah, it I do. Just, I I do remember that. And then and then they stop doing it. It's like it's just no longer the default. And I've checked that little checkbox. It just never seems to do it. So now I'm not good. It's back on the command line. Just okay. If I want it to work, I'll do it myself. You know. I I'm glad because that you also have this problem because I've had this problem and I thought it was me. So at least now it's just us, I guess. <laughs> so cool. I mean, I love IntelliJ so much, but please make this work. I don't want to have to reload dependencies when things get installed. Yep. It was working fine for a few years, and then it got really like they did something, and just overnight it became dog slow. And I, you know, I don't know. It's given all the. Well, I also think like in the streaming times, right? We're still in streaming times versus in-person times. Like I, the sharing of the screen really slows things down quite a bit, like two to three oh, x. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's when it's tough, especially like when you know Josh and I are thinking about doing a native talk, like. It's gonna. We're gonna have to, you know, do a jig on stage just to get through like the, the time when it's building it all. So one of the the one upside of this uh, this you know, forsaken pandemic is uh, is that now I can submit pre-recorded talks and that I can use like I can speed up the native image builds like just a little animation showing a clock ticking for five seconds, uh, you know, because it's that it's not it's native image code native in, image compilation. Mm. That's a thing, I guess. But so uh, my goal, my hope is that this, the idea is that you can trust that the code you've written in Java that runs on the JVM will work exactly as it will in, in the compiled code uh, for Graalvm, right? 
but uh, obviously you, you just saw today, it's not hundred percent there yet. You know, like small things like CDD proxies for configuration classes, little quirks. Right. And you mentioned something like we're seeing all these warnings about like couch base and web flux and stuff, even though we don't have them in this project, you said those are, those will be hidden in like the 11.0 release or something. Not hidden. What we're trying to do is to take advantage of functional transpilation or something like that. So basically, you know, those configuration classes, there's also a mechanism where you can do functional configuration. So you can actually, you can, it's a, a what is it called? Application context initializer or something like that. Application initializer. Mm -hmm. It's a callback interface right. that was in, in spring uh, like years ago, like five years ago, maybe I think it's spring five. Uh, and that, in, that interface, yeah, it's spring five. Let's say that. That sounds right. Uh, it's a interface that gives you a pointer to the context that you can then programmatically register beans on. So you can say application context dot register bean bean, you know, then the class, you know, foo dot class comma, and then a supplier that produces an instance of foo, right? Um, and that that requires no configuration class. That requires no reflection. Configuration classes do require mm. uh, reflection and so on, right? But um, the 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 hope is that. We, we can work, we have something called spring init that we worked on that actually at compile time turns all of your Java configuration classes into this functional configuration, right? Hmm. We work through your configuration classes, turn it into functional config, and that requires no reflection at all anywhere. Like it doesn't require us to provide hints for, it's, this is like spring init is experimental, but it's do spring hyphen init, maybe it's like desires thing, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so I just got a comment. We have been ignoring um, this, the chat, which is uh, partially my fault because I can't do more than one thing at once. Yeah. Um, this but but there are some great comments in here. J James Ward is definitely agreeing with us about uh, the change in IntelliJ. Wow. And uh, you know we've got a little 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 flack for for not answering questions here. But some people are switching to you know. Dropping off the IntelliJ bandwagon, going right to uh, VS Code. There's there's a little bit of everything on here, but uh, what one other one other question from Micah here, which isn't actually a troll, which is uh, surprising, is uh, has anyone done any any testing with um, uh, you know build, building Grawl images on on the M1 versus the Intel machine? Yeah, it's slower for me. I have yeah. an M1. Um... Uh, it's I don't know. Gravium seems slower. I don't understand why. Maybe I did it wrong. I was it was yeah. It was it was actually when I was working with Matt on this thing last week. So I I, I want that to be faster. It is so fast in every other respect. I don't understand why it's not faster. So I'm uh, there's something I'm missing clearly. Anyway, this is Spring Init. There you go. You can see the idea. It takes that configuration class, turns it into that configuration initializer, the application context initializer. That re that in turn requires no configuration, no AOT proxies, nothing. And so now the compiler doesn't need any JSON config or int or anything because, you know, it knows exactly what's going to be used. There's no like question about what's going to be used. We don't have to provide an extra configuration. It can statically analyze the code base. For, and, and for this to work, by the way, we have to run this on all of the Spring Boot configuration classes, all auto config, all configuration everywhere, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so this is great because I know every time I've used oh. Grawl to build a native image, I spent most of my time like hacking up uh, JSON files that say which which bits of reflection I'm using or other libraries are using or I would dream about using or or anything in the future. So well, uh, if you're do, using, doing this automatically, it's huge. Well, Spring Native is doing it automatically already, right? The, it's just that, you know, we have to do it. We do it for all of our configuration classes. It'd be nice to not need to do that in the first place. So what happened here, friends? Oh. So this is a test, and I don't know if skipping the test would actually fix this, but... Uh, it seems to be related to this configuration okay. validator and its resource bundle. Yeah. Can, oh, can wonderful. You grab that, can you grab that string com for such octa commons, blah, 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 all the way to the configuration validator? This one? Um, yeah, just grab that whole thing and then go to the configuration class or, I don't know. Do you have a, a hint right. class somewhere? I for don't now. think so. Do you, for is now, there, Brian? Go go in in the uh, in this the starter or Matt's example. Go into for now. Let's just do let's do do this on Matt's example, and then at, at the very end for the cherry on top, we'll extract it out into a hints jar that ships like auto configuration for Gravium's. Oh, cool! 
Okay. Add this to your okay. demo application. Add the following, a resource hint annotation to the demo application, Spring Boot application annotation. Okay. Resource like that. Yeah. And then parenthesis. And then there's like pattern is the path there. And then is bundle, is that true or false? And it looks like it is. Okay, so pattern and put this in there. And then is bundle true like that? Yeah, looks right. Yeah, and this okay. while, while skipping tests because we right because that took seven minutes. <laughs> we can only do that like yes. five more times and we're out of time. So it's maybe while we're waiting for this, still time. <laughs> right. uh, I I had mentioned at at one point that I was doing dash p native to use uh, JDK with Grawl to build this, but if you use the build image that uses Docker, is that correct, Josh? Yeah, that's correct. And, and why would you want to do one over the other? Um, well, so most organizations want to take their application and deploy it into a, a container orchestrator of some sort anyway. So we just put those two steps together. The um, mm. other thing is that you don't need to have GraalVM installed. It runs the build inside of a Docker container. So as long as you've got Docker da daemon running somewhere, it'll, it'll do the right thing. The idea is that we're using a, a, a thing called a build pack. The core conceit of build packs is that there are only so many different ways to um, – to, uh, there are only so many different ways to take an application and turn it into a, a container. So right. why bother reinventing it? Just reuse that recipe. And the recipes come from the Heroku and uh, and uh, Cloud Foundry teams uh, over, you know, they represent the best sort of work from those two different teams over the last almost a decade, I guess. So, yeah, just let just let us do it. We, we, we've figured out how to run Java minus jar for you. You know, like why bother reinventing this with every single new image? That makes sense. And so have you seen like differences in your own tests and you know the building time if you use one technique over another? Up and you know, up until recently they didn't even like okay, I knew how to run the, the Maven Gradle GraalVM compiler thing um, uh, for all this time. I just didn't do it very often because the build packs thing was the default and it was supported out of the box and it's so darn easy. So I don't really know. Uh, they just in the last week or two, must be it couldn't be more than a week. It's they on start that spring video now when you go there. It'll generate, um, you know, the native build tools version and all that stuff. It'll do that for you autom automatically. That's new, though. That wasn't the case, you know, beginning of June, for example. Or right. Maybe. So I generated this project like a week ago, right? And it's got this native profile in here that, yeah. that this is the new stuff that Josh is talking about because this uses Graal VM to build it. And if you don't have Graal VM installed, like, you'll get a failure. Yeah. It's a profile, too. So you get regular. If you do a Maven package, you get a JVM build. If you do Maven package minus P native. You got a gravity and build and uh, time for copy. <laughs> oh, I, I used uh, SDK man to install it. I don't oh, yeah. need the new one, but if I do, what is it SDK Java. list Java? That's, that's my life right there. By the way, this is simultaneously terrifying, but also awesome. Look at all those different ways to get Java installed that do seemingly the same thing, except for gravity. Right. And so this one right here is the one that I have installed. So if I was to use like Java 11, and I ran with the dash p native, it would fail, right? But if I did the build image and I had Docker running, then it would succeed. So um, I guess that's a big disadvantage, right? Is you don't have to have that Graal VM SDK. I, I, I love me some SDK, man, but my one gripe is that I think they only hold on to the last um, couple versions of each major version of Java, version of versions. Um, so uh, I, in a handful of projects I've used like, you know, the, the dot equivalent, I, I forget what it is, but you know, a dot file to specify the version of Java or the version and SDK and, um, you know, provider of this, this Java. So for a Graal project subscribers, you can, you can pin, pin the version. Um, but for other projects, you know, that version may not be there next week. So it's really hard to, uh, depend to a specific version. So of Java. you're saying I have 11.0.11 here and I don't see like 11.0.3, but it's probably a thing, right? If I tried to install that, it wouldn't work. It may, it may not be there anymore because it's on some CDN. It, I haven't looked at this in a year or two, but uh, they were, they well, were um, removing those versions to probably save, save money. Right. I can't, so I can't blame those folks. I didn't even, I didn't, but look at the example. It's doing exactly what I'm trying to do. It compiled. Let's run it. Let's see what happens. 
All right, you're right. It's not available. All right. Uh, yeah. That is funny. So that's finally right, great, so but got, I, I, it's a great tool. So we got target demo here. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. So this this was the issue that that I threw my hands up with. Is that because it's like an inner class or what? There's an inner class that's it's used. So there's a custom um, um, set of conditions. So there's a conditional annotation that has a few inner conditional uh, conditional classes that's used. Uh, and this is done elsewhere in in Spring and Spring Security and other Spring Boot things. Uh, so I don't know if there's something we need to configure specifically or if I'm doing something wrong and I need to expose it some other way. Um, and, and to be honest, this may be something we can look at removing because this was, you know, some of this stuff was needed back in whatever, Spring Spring Boot uh, 1.5. And then what was that? It was the older Spring Security OAuth library, which is now in the source tree and lots of things have changed. What's the one that it's missing? Um, Introspection if you, if you, URI if, condition? If you search for that conditional class, You'll, you'll find where it's used. It's not used. Search for- This is the one I'm in. Yeah, search, search for that class. It's it's It should be defined in a conditional annotation. Somewhere else? Somewhere else, in what? that OAuth 2 tree somewhere. Hopefully I'm not lying to you. There, it's right on the bottom. Okay. But that's that's what I, I I don't I don't know where to go from here. Uh, me either, if I'm honest. Can we try adding a type hint? Maybe, maybe that'll work. I don't know. Like, sure, in the demo project. Yeah, just for those three subtypes. Although so you're probably you're not public, that might be an issue. You think these guys need to be public? Well. The type names do because you want to reference them from an annotation. You can do the, the oh no 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 I'm sorry you can use a uh, yeah yeah that's by the way Kazar that's uh, Andy Clement he's the uh, mad our, our resident mad scientist um yeah I'm kind of surprised it's missing that too if I'm honest like hmm I don't know it's one thing as a Hail Mary that I might work. I don't know. Maybe Andy can correct me here. But what if we did a type hint? Yeah. Okay. So just add a type hint for all three of those types. That'll force it to keep the. It'll keep it in the config. Uh. Yeah. Type hint dot parenthesis and then I think it's like you can do a string a bean name or a type name. Yeah. String version. Type right? names. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So so. Uh... I, I've I've had to hack up a bunch of JSON files, so I'm assuming all of these hint annotations uh, prevent yeah. me from going down the JSON hell that I normally have to do. Right, and they and they you can refactor them with the types, so that's nice and, and so on. But okay, so what you want to do is get that full package, oh. the class, and then it's like dollar sign client ID connection or something like that. I think that's right. Whatever the okay, sub so. path thing for a. String version. This guy, the full like that, and then the uh, oh, this guy. Andy, should we do the top level type, or do you think we need to do the subtypes as well? Like, if I kept the top level type, it wouldn't throw away the inner types, right? Surely not. Where's this guy though? That's in a different class. In the inner class. It's a static inner class, isn't it? Yeah. So, so this is Andy. So trading trading one hell for the other. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so we need this client ID, client secret, and I think, uh, yeah, it's my hunch. I'm not sure if we. Uh, so my my question is, will, will Gravium throw away the inner type? Like, if we tell it to keep octa to, octa opaque, whatever. Okay, yeah, just add them all. Like, worst case, we okay. we only need one, but I think that's the right syntax, isn't it, for a fully qualified subclass with a dollar sign? Yeah. I mean, that's what it is down here, right? Unless it needs to be slash instead of dot. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, th I, th I, think, I think Andy's saying do everything because, you know, 
reduce the round trip here. Well, he's saying don't do everything, but he understands the pain. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's just do everything just to fail fast and then we can prune it later. And is that, is that the right syntax? Client ID, is that opaque token introspection conditional dollar sign client ID condition? Is that how you would reference a specific one? Well, he's looking. He's looking. He's looking. You should just pull him in here. What's going on? Why don't, why don't we just pull him in this? Uh, well, yeah, he's my phone of friend, right? Like, he's my, he's my lifeline. <laughs> He's got like real work to do, so. Right, right. I understand. Even uh, you know, heckling from the. He doesn't get paid to be on camera. Mm. <laughs> he gets paid to make give us reasons so that we can be on camera. There you go. This is going to be awesome when it works, and we're going to all be glad that you know Andy uh, woke up and wrote the code that made it so. Well, yeah. let's talk about. Let's get ahead of ourselves because we're going to be waiting here a bit for that to compile. Uh, how would you move like these resource hints and these type hints into the Octa Spring Boot starter? Is that the JSON file that Brian's talking about? It wouldn't be in the starter because the problem is that you need to put a, you need a dependency that gets added to the dependencies for the GraalVM compiler itself, the plugin, right? So the Maven plugin has a dependency section. So right. you, my the we don't really have a lot of standard device. What I've just been doing is I create a separate jar called something something hints hyphen hints. In there, you can put a class, call it, you know, Octa Starter Native Configuration. It, it extends Native Configuration. You can then add these annotations to that that type, and then you put that in a service loader, JDK six service loader reference. So meta inf services, and then it's like uh, the fully qualified name of the of Native Configuration type as the file name, right? And then you put the class that implements that interface, the the one you've just defined, in that text file. So meta inf services. Fully qualified name to native to the type called native configuration for the text file name, right. uh, and then put a reference to your hints class that you'll have defined. So that and, and and it's basically the same annotations, just in that other class. Yeah, and that class implements or extends the native configuration interface or type rather uh, from yep. Spring, you know. You also need when you create that Spring Boot dependency that that extra hints library, you're going to want to add the Spring hyphen AOT. Dependency, so it's exactly the same as the Spring, um, whatever the Spring native. What do you? Yeah, go up there. It's in your build. Right keep, here. No, no, keep going up. up, up, up. Uh, spring native. See where it says Org Spring Framework Experimental Spring native. Literally, just copy right. and paste that. And replace the word native with AOT, and that'll give you access to the programmatic. Because going beyond annotations, there's actually a, a, a mechanism you can use to programmatically register hints as opposed to with just static annotations, right? Uh, so we'll, we'll do that, but uh, so is, not, any, is in any of these, uh, you know, sugary awesomeness, is any of this like sort of being uh, done by the, the, the Grawl team themselves? Sugary, what do you mean? Well, like, you know, th this, this is great for spring folks, right? Which is, I mean, yeah, you know what we're here to talk about, but you know, like Quarkus and and Micronaut and all those folks. I mean, do they have to then come up with their own sort of equivalent, or is any of this getting sort of lumped into uh, Growl to make these things easier? I have no idea. No idea. I know that the Growl team has. You know, I, know, I know our team and that team has, you know, collaborated here and there. I don't. I don't know the extent of that. Uh, I'm. I'm not. Uh, it's above my pay grade. I, I'm just here to write. <laughs> no worries. I just, I, I just want know. things to pile on. Oh, reflection is hard. You know, that's that's all. <laughs> yeah. And so then, as far as the dependencies, so we had a, a new jar, right? It's a new Maven coordinates and all that. Uh, do we make our starter dependent on that, or do people actually need to pull in that dependency into their projects? They need, if they want to use the Octa bit, they need to bring in the starter. And then bring in the, the the hints jar for their Maven plugin. What happened? Oh no! Did you did you miss one? Octa because it, it does not exist. How about the uh, the parent class there? Yeah, the you might want class. To. Yeah, I would just add that. Which one's that? The opaque no, Octa. Yeah. This one. Yeah. 
Okay. Just to, you know, you can never be too sure. So like that. Yeah. And then one last thing I would try, I don't know if it makes a difference. I don't know what the default is, but for me, for me, you know, I, I, th I threw some salt over my shoulder and then I also make it so that the access equals access bits dot all. So for the attribute uh, for the annotation, it's access equals access bits, capital A, capital B dot all. Cool. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let's just yeah. rinse and repeat. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> All right, how long does that take? Here we got another, uh, let's see here, four minutes. Yeah. Do you want to set up that extra jar quickly? Sure. Yeah. Well, well start, kick off the build, and then we set up the jar. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I did. Okay. Yep, it's gone. So I, me, I just go to start that screen and go to new, I just create a new jar, a new project that way, and then I gut it and get rid of the plugins for everything except for um, the dependencies. So add spring experiment, right. yeah, and then call Anything it. Anything else? Get, no, yeah, I mean, you know, whatever you just call it, spring native, you know, whatever you want to call it, octa hints. Um, octa spring, right, and then uh, oop, call it hints or spring native. Hints. Okay, and then anything else? Uh, nope, just, you know, fingers crossed. All right, can we do it? We got, what, 13 minutes? Oh, the anxiety. I don't even tell you in that come on. I just realized that, uh, you know, when you install the IntelliJ command line tools, and if you have, you know, whatever it is, the IntelliJ toolbox or, or you know, with, with, with all the other awesome IDEs they have, there's a command line tool for each one, which I feel silly admitting I didn't know until yesterday. <laughs> so I, mean, do you even I don't have to run immediately. I just looked. I don't have to run at noon exactly, but... You know, it would be. Oh, nice. we're get, we're we're getting it done before then, so we're we're sure, yeah. <laughs> Always up. So would you take everything, even the native hint for the HTTPS, and put it in there? Yep. Okay. So. <laughs> Poor Andy. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Yeah. I I don't I think Rabel's probably met Andy. He he's a saint. Uh, I would just create a new class. Oh yeah, well, whatever. Cre create a new class called you know hints or something, and just get rid of that one. You don't need that one. You have to have monk-like patience to. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it doesn't work, we're just gonna hold Josh hostage, I guess. I mean, <laughs> help. Uh, okay, so call and then extend native configuration. Your your class, yeah. And so you, this, I think this is why you have to add that extra jar. Go go back to the build, and then oh, that copy. was the AOT one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this one. Uh, yeah. It just call it Spring AOT. Uh, don't get it's not Spring Native AOT, just Spring AOT. Okay. Can you? What's the GitHub repository for this uh, Octa Spring Security OAuth? It to is. I will. I will paste it in here. Yeah. Is it public? Is it open source? It is. Yep. Yep. Ooh. I just can't type right now. Okay. It's usually at the top of my history. And now it's, you know, oh, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm looking for it. <laughs> All right. So it is Okta slash Okta dash spring boot. Oh, I didn't show it. There we go. Woohoo. Okay, cool. Thanks. Well, have a look you later. So okay, that that's part of it. The other thing is you need. Um, by the way, look at that. See that native configuration class? Can you do input? Oh, you know, implement methods or yeah. See yeah. those that uh, override the compute hints method. 
compute hints. Okay. Yeah. That's one of my favorite methods in all of Spring Native. That method, you can return a, a dynamic list of hints. So if you want to return, you basically you create a, a list of hint declarations. It just it can be zero or it can be five or it can be whatever. And you get access to this kind of reflection-like thing called a type system. It's not actually the JDK type system. It's not Java reflection because, of course, we're doing this at compile time. But you get access to this thing that you can use to query things about the type system. So, for example, find all classes that are descendants of this class or, uh, you know, find, uh, you know, give me a, a reference to a type and all that. And so you can actually check to see what annotations are present on types. You can you can find uh, classes. You can, you can find subclasses, hierarchies. And you can you know, programmatically, based on this dynamic introspection, register these hints programmatically, right? So you can actually register custom hints using for loops and all that stuff, uh, which is cool. So if you're doing framework -y kind of stuff, and I'm not sure if this stuff that you're doing quite falls into the domain where you might need this, but if you're doing framework -y kind of bits, uh, it can be very useful because, you know, if somebody registers a custom component type, we can programmatically discover that with the presence of the annotation and then register a hint for it automatically. So you never even know, need to know about it. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, uh, you can go ahead and un, un, you can just comment out that method. There's nothing, I think, yeah, just, just for your own reference for later. Um, and then you need to create a source main resources meta inf. Is it not commenting? Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Source main resources meta inf directory. And then there's another folder called services or service, I think. Services. All right, let me go check. Fine, I'll do work. I'll, I'll, see, I'll see how we're building here back here. Oh, oh. five minutes. And oh. moment of truth. <sighs> oh, boy. Oh, is it working? Let's find out with my access token here. I'm scared. Come on, baby. Hold me. Boom. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, so those type hints. Nice. <laughs> Rabel for the win. Rabel and, and Brian for the win. Awesome. Yeah, that's all cool. you, man. Oh, all right. Well, I can <laughs> uh, eight minutes there. I mean, all right. Okay. Sir, right. Service services with an S, and then the it'll be I'm the, not, the oh, is fully it? qualified uh, class name for native with, configuration with with no extension. Yeah. For for the file and uh, so just copy org spring framework native x type native configuration. That package import there. Which on this Google one? has a little uh, um, what the second that in, one. In, yeah. yeah. This one? No, no, the native configuration one. Where it says native. yeah, the, see it says import Spring Framework native X type native configuration. Just copy yeah. yeah, copy that whole thing. <laughs> Create a text file called that. New yeah, file. Google has a little. Uh, I think I forget what it's called. Auto services, a little project that you can annotate and it'll generate those files for you which cool. is pretty handy and then copy the fully qualified name to the hints class and paste it into that text file Sometimes maybe yeah like that nice. yeah that that's it so let's try so now if we do this you go ahead and do a maven install on that uh, oh no sorry go to go to your palm.xml first let's get rid of the the Spring Boot Maven plugin and the uh, Gravium plugins and all that, because we just want a regular jar, nothing else. I think you just delete right. anything. Yeah. We don't need any plugins? No plugins. You might need the repositories, but nothing else. OK. okay. Good. Uh, and you can delete the profile, I think, because it's sort of, you know, all right. not going to help yet. OK, and then do a Maven install on that, that artifact. And then the moment of the real proof of the pudding is to be able to then reference this from the um, the uh, client app instead of you know we're going to comment out the, the hints that are in your client app and then reference it from the Maven plugin dependencies. All right, so we got this right here. Well, we can copy all of it, right? Yeah. And we go back to our project, which is here, and we add it here. Oh. Not, not there. You have to go down to the build plugin for the Spring AOT Maven plugin. Yeah. It's and then, here? Okay. yeah, above executions, there's like a dependencies stanza. Oh, hello. What's this? You sure? 
Uh, well, maybe it's, I don't know, it's above executions, not, not inside of it. Okay. And you're saying we can remove all these? I would comment them out first, just in case, but yeah. <laughs> My comment shortcut isn't working, so I'll do the old fashioned way. No. All right. Well, now yeah. we rebuild. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Four minutes till we. Uh... Oh, and if oh. Four, we have exactly five minutes, according to. All that. right. Yeah. This Pray is it. Rate, rate, rate. So. Oh, I mean, I think if you fix a bug like this in an hour, I think that's a huge win. I mean, I guess technically it's three hours because there's three of us, but, you know, who's counting? <laughs> Actually, I, Andy did most of the work. so That's, that, that's true. It's true. We'll, we'll, we'll bill Andy's time in here, too. <laughs> we're just, I'm just right. a great observer. We got to send Andy a T-shirt now. Oh, uh, yeah. Ab absolutely. This is so cool. That is cool. You guys got this like starter up and running, and it, you had to do some changes. I, it wasn't exactly perfect yet, but can you imagine how good it's going to be? Just give it another hot minute, you know, the, the at the rate of change and things the way, the way things are getting better. Uh, yeah, no, that's it, pretty minimal, right? I mean, you know, the, this these these hints in here, and um, and there was what there was one one bean that needed tweaking. Yeah, and so I I think both that type hint, like I. Andy can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's a bug. I think it, I don't, I don't think you need that type in. Uh, it shouldn't be required. So hopefully that goes away one day. And then the other thing is the, um, having to change the parameter method. That's, you could just leave that. It's not a bad change. It didn't break your code or anything like that. But right. hopefully, hopefully that won't even be required one day either. Either way, you're functionally, you didn't lose anything. You didn't make a compromise with that change. It's just different. Yep. All right. Oh, so excited. All right. Three minutes. Hit the turbo button. Well, the question is, if I don't show that screen, will it build faster? <laughs> well, we're going to claim victory. I mean, you can just turn it off. Oh, it worked. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got. Oh, did you see that? That's a good message to get. That's help from the. Uh, it's help from somebody who knows. I oh, that's so cool. We will absolutely do that. That's legit. Like you're helping make spring better with your bugs. This is so cool. Oh, it, it, it compiled. No, it's not compiled. It's not compiled yet. No, we're down we're on the wire. Oh, the agony. And you got three different IntelliJ windows here at this point, right? You got the client app, the actual starter, and the hints jar. Right. Yeah. Make sure you, you know, don't. That's a normal day, right? That and 50, 50 browser tabs and yeah. call yourself a developer. Well, so my. StreamYard, right? <laughs> StreamYard. So my life is that I always do these demos on stage or on screen or whatever the 2021 equivalent of that is. And, uh, and then as soon as I'm done, I'm like, oh, well, RMRF, all those projects that I created uh, because I'm. It's the same thing. I've done it before. You know, I don't, I'm not. I'm not particularly attached to it. But sometimes I have actual code that I do, and I, for reasons, sometimes let those projects live in downloads, just so I can hack something out. And then invariably, I'll go do a presentation, generate like four more modules or whatever in, in the course of my demo. And then at the end of my demo, I'm like, goodbye, everybody. Close. Turn off the camera. And then RMRF everything in downloads. I'm like, oh, my actual <laughs> code is in there. <laughs> Son of a, you know. So make sure you, whatever you do when you when you close the camera when you turn off the camera don't just chuck all the code you created as a sample like i always do good call well at least we got it recorded right like this is on twitch we'll we'll save it and put it on youtube later so you can you know, even if i do delete everything we can rewatch it and know what we did uh, absolutely all right are we gonna do it we got, we got, yeah we got we're down to seconds matt seconds come on baby do they literally like with a like a cane and a hook? Do they literally? Yeah, just... they just pull them. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. I don't think Twitch cares. No. Yeah. Oh, ah. no. oh no. What did you do? Uh, wah, wah. Well. Well. <laughs> well, we know what we, we need to working. do. <laughs> it's way cooler, right? I, I'm I'm still gonna call victory. I don't. Let's see. Oh, yeah. 
I'm missing something, obviously. Let me see. Spins. It's the same one. It can't find oh. it or whatever. The is that a file? Can you go back to the meta inf directory? Is that a file or is that a... Uh, what is that? It doesn't There's look one. Like... It's a file. No, but is it inside of a folder called services inside of another folder called meta inf? Let's look. CD source main resources. All right. CD meta inf services. Oh. Wow, it looks like a... Okay, that's weird. Yeah, it looks good. What did we? And do? and 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 your uh, no no weird Maven problems, right? Like that jar what did get pulled in to your uh, your project? Yeah, I mean, I added the coordinates over here, right? And it it worked. Yeah. Unless there's some misconfiguration here on the AOT Maven plugin. Can we see the? Uh, I'm, 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 let me just go check some other project. Uh, which one did I work on? Here's where the pair programming aspect comes in. Let's make sure and right. watch the All chat. Right. We're we're in, we're in su su sudden death now, right? Like. <laughs> Yeah, okay, well, let's... How bizarre. All right, yeah. So uh, I, I assume a resources config JSON gets generated both times, so you could uh, control your target directory looking for, for resource dash config. Yeah, but it should be exactly the same as before. I'm missing something obvious. Yeah, and then, uh, Andy, you've been a huge help. Uh, Thank you. We, we will get your address and send you a T-shirt. <laughs> totally. Okay. So, are we? Are you? Do you two turn into pumpkins, or do you have a minute? Uh, oh, we I, got a minute. I, I got nothing. Yeah. Let's let's see if we can figure this out because this is like this has to work. We can't just leave it here, friend. Like you can't you can't go to sleep <laughs> till you till you figure it out, right? It's one of those yeah. bugs. Okay. So, um. <laughs> did you? I, I know this is ridiculously obvious, but did you do a main install for the hinge jar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right here, right? So close. Okay. What is the issue? It's a native hint. Something about the type hint over here works, but it doesn't over here. Yeah, but it's, it's literally the same, right? Hints. Can you, I mean, does it matter? I, I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but can you rename hints to like Octa hints or something? This one right here? Yeah, I'm just trying everything. And so. reinstall it. Uh huh. didn't share the yeah, uh, cool let's see maybe it's not okay that's so bizarre why would and did you change the text file the uh, the services oh, oh no yeah yeah oh yeah oh, it oh, did, did for me though that. lj smart like that so smart so smart hmm. all right so we got another why would four why would that make a difference i don't know i still don't know i'm i'm I lost here. Did I? Okay, so if I go here, demo, palm to XML. And, and it, the dependency needs to be a dependency of the plugin, right? Yeah, yeah, just a dependency of the Spring AOT Maven plugin. Um, I mean, if we took it out, would it give us that error that it was before, like the original error? Probably. Yeah, right. The other thing, by the way, can you try removing the Spring AOT dependency from the client app from the demo? So yeah, it's transitively brought in. Yeah. Oh, you've already got it there. Okay, so it's just Spring Native. That's fine. Is it the yeah. same? Is it the same version for both? Yeah, it should be right. Ten dot ten. Yeah, zero ten. Ten. Zero dot ten dot zero. Um. Mm -hmm. Octo. How do you? Okay. Let's see here. 
dependencies, Spring OT, Maven plugin. Yeah, you might try like removing some of the hints and see if it breaks the old fashioned way. Okay, we'll wait till this one finishes. Yeah. The other thing is, can you go back to the uh, the hint class? Okay, so we got type hint, native hint. Just, uh, just indulge me here. In the native hint, there are attributes, one called resources, another one called types, I think. So can you put those other two hints as part of the native hint? Because that native hint, believe it or not, is an umbrella. It should just find all of them, but just try doing that. Try doing resources equals, and then put the resource hint. And do this string here? No, the whole annotation. Oh, you're saying put it inside there? Yeah, nest, nested. Like, I have no idea if this would make a difference, but it, yeah, okay. And then same thing for comma types, I think. Yeah, and then put the type hint, the giant hint of typiness. Okay, that's an ugly annotation. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that'll make a difference, no idea. Just trying to see if there's maybe it's not detecting it or something. Because it, it right. native is the root of that API. It's, we, I, it, you saw it worked, so I don't know why it would be different. But do you need the Spring Boot starter as a dependency on the Octa hints library? I don't know why you would. Can't imagine. It's like you just need that AOT one, right? Well, that's what I'm wondering is because, you know, in this one, like it has access to the starter, right? This one doesn't. Yeah. So maybe copy and paste that starter into the hints library just for, you know, giggles. Like this thing right here. Yeah. I'm trying to get it as, as similar as possible and as canonical as possible. I, I literally just got this whole process to work for the JetBrains exposed ORM like five days ago. So I know it works, or at least it can work. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I just don't know why it's not working here in particular. All right. It's something small. Yeah, yeah. It's, it always is, right? Is this where you spend, you know, most of your time? Yeah. You know, like, try this, run the build. Come back in five minutes, change one character, run the build again. <laughs> Yes. The nice thing is, if we do this, nobody else will have to do it, right? Exactly. You can just update the docs, and now people will be able to take their apps to production with Gravium and Spring Native unchanged, hopefully. Totally. And by the way, you should, I mean, you, could... you should test the other stuff that your app does. Maybe it might be time to re-enable those tests to see if there's any corner cases that don't break. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, but we, we could start. We uh, So we have, we have a whole, you know, whole suite of... Uh, um, Integration test, but we can build a, a, a native a native image uh, for one of those tests and run the same test and yeah everything will, should work. Okay. All right. So that first one I tested was just the uh, Octa hints, right? We renamed yeah. it from hints to Octa hints, so yeah, it wasn't a very big change. But this one obviously is bigger. Yeah, just throwing the kitchen sink at it. But in your other examples, did you end up doing all this nested stuff? No. I don't think I did. Did I? Let me check. No, uh, you know what I had? I had just one type hint at the, at the root. That's, that was mm -hmm. the thing. Like, what I was doing is I, I, I had to bring in like 20 different types from the exposed ORM project. So it's just one type hint annotation with like, you know, a typed array pointing to 20 different class literals. Right. And it was in Kotlin too, so that was cool. It was like, it was, the, the class itself was just class exposed ORM hints colon native configuration. And then there's like every other line except for the imports was all this annotation. It's like, with 59 to 16, so you know, 16 to 59 lines of code. Well, cool though. I mean, e even even if uh, we don't quite figure this part out, we 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 figure out the problem. Yeah. Um, we 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 built it. It works. Uh, I mean, like I said, I I'm pretty excited 
uh, that it was, you know, this easy. I mean, I know we tripped over it, but there's not a lot that we had to do. So. No. And we'll get this to work too. I'm, like I know, I know it can be done. I just just want to get it done now. Now. Yeah, I like the idea of the hinge jar too. That way, keep it separate. If if you're building, you know, native jars or native images, you can just pull this one extra dependency in and. Well, yeah, and you can imagine the circulated problem we'd have otherwise, right? Like, yep. we're, we need the hints to tell GraalVM how to compile the starter. And you can't have the starter unless it's already compiled. You know, it's a, yeah. Do me, do me, do. Come on, Growl, do the thing. We talked about this. GraalVM is... It is, a bit, it is a bit painful to debug it, right? Yeah, yeah. But... You know, hopefully some of the, like, again, the fact that 90% of it works flawlessly without changes, and hopefully soon that'll be closer to 100, you know, like that. Yeah. The goal is that you don't have to debug this. If, or, if, or if anybody has to debug it, it's you and me and other people that are shipping libraries that other people depend on. But I want this to just be, like, just flawlessly simple, right? And, and like I said, uh, ideally, you know, the result from your, Hint will just be those two little annotations, native hint and resource hint. Like, right. That'll be it. Hopefully, we get rid of some of the need for the other stuff. Come on, compiler. I, 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 oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I, even though I'm kvetching, GraalVam is pretty amazing. I'm, I'm legit impressed. Uh, yeah, and it, even that uh, the resource hint probably belongs in that other project. So that's a... Uh, you know, another Octa dependency that just does some common validation, but that should probably belong in that project anyway for, you know, even non non native spring native folks. Oh, true. You could just put the JSON file. Yeah. Ship the yeah. JSON one. You can do, there's a, what is it? Even just a properties or something. That's what the native hint gets used as. Wait, what? What happened here? Same thing. <sighs> Hmm. Wow. This is about the time I break down and I start uh, t using the, the Ma Maven dash X flag and and uh, verbose and digging through things and can you crying, share crying a little and yeah can you share that can you code with me for the native hints one this one here yeah yeah. How do I? Uh, it's going to give me a URL. I think it pops up here and says. Oh, do you want to turn off your camera for that? Because we don't want just anyone joining? No, it's probably uh, <laughs> the other advice. Right, I'll, I'll stop it and then try it here. Full access. Weather. It's currently cloudy and 66 degrees. It feels warmer. It's going Maybe on. there's another one I have to stop first or something. Do, 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 do. I have no idea what this fuzzy thing is on my screen here. I, I, I'm mesmerized by whatever, whatever, whatever that is. It's, it's right, it's right. Where is it? I can't figure it out. It's right, right here. Oh, it's my other camera. All right, so then I'll face <laughs> us into the private chat and StreamYard. Oh, wait. Like my see, Mike could call it. It was my camera. Hey, so you want me to share my screen again? Yeah, it, it's, it's all all you. So I, okay, so this is here. That's the Octa Spring Boot Starter. This is the snapshot that you're working on right now, right? Right. Just think about this. Influence hmm. of configuration. Source, main, resources. Why does it show as a period? That is so weird to me. Which one? It's so, 
it shows as a meta inf period services, and I don't understand why. I think it's because under resources, they expect package names, right? So even if yeah. you did like com slash whatever, Good. it would do com dot. Oh, open up your terminal, Matt. And do, uh, uh, do, you... do find space target slash, what is it, compiled classes? I forget what that, gener uh, where is it? Just classes. I... Oh, I should, I should have known that off the top of my head, but. Enter. Hit, hit enter, Fine. yeah, and then see see what you got. No, Let's it looks try. right. Services, yeah. Is there like a is there a space in the file name or anything like that? I don't think so. Uh, but what about in the IDE if you click on that? Because oh yeah. Okay, that's fine. Let's, I'm going to delete, uh, you should delete application app properties, yeah. And then, what else do we need? I'm going to add a, the other thing I want to see is what happens if you go to the source, if you go to the target, you know, uh, go to the target directory of the, uh, the client application. Okay. Those hints were generated. Underwear. Um, look for like a look for the meta inf directory and then look for Spring AOT. Uh, you know, are we looking for com in here? Yeah, look for all that stuff like the hints that you'd expect to be there. Are they? Those aren't any hints that we added, though, right? These aren't uh, the ones. That, that's the conditional. Or is that, uh, a, di is that a different one? Yeah, go to reflect config. Yeah, there they are. Well, what the hell? It even has OF2 properties proxy, so we know it's the right syntax. Hmm. Do you so see the, all, all of that is generated by the spring AOT the, processing those annotations. Yep. Yeah, okay. I mean, at what point? I, like, I don't get it. Like, we, we're putting in the same config, right? All right. Uh, can you do a reinstall of the Okta hints native hints library? I just made some changes. And then just do Maven Spring AOT colon generate in the in the in the client in the demo. So just do an MVN install here. Yeah, or maybe skip test. Not that we have any, but <laughs> funny. Uh, and then Back. and then here you want to do just do Maven clean Spring hyphen AOT colon generate. So that I I put I I did the good old fashioned. There you go. Hello from Octahint. So that's definitely getting involved. Hmm. Okay. Oh, what? Huh? Oh, uh, do a Maven package quick. I don't know why it does this, but you need to have a target directory. Okay. Now do the spring Maven spring hyphen AOT generate again. No, oh, no clean. Sorry. Ah. Ah. No. Package and then this. Yeah, just do that. Yeah. We don't want the uh, target director to go away. Always, always skip your test. <laughs> <laughs> That's a t shirt waiting to happen. <laughs> that would be the worst. <laughs> it would. Okay, now you want me to look at something? Yeah, let's look at the resulting JSON files. Do they do they reflect what we put in there? Do you see in, in the image properties? Uh, do you see the enable URL protocol HTTPS? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's our thing. And then what about the resources? Do you see that com you know commons config check whatever nope. in the resource config? 
on the resources yeah yeah um what was it config it was check for slash yeah that one yep yeah. you know that's there and then what about the uh the type hints are those there that's in the reflect here yeah yep huh Maybe try recompiling. I don't know. Like it's it's bizarre. Our Maven plugins are still fairly new. That's why I think cleaning it up once was a good idea because we threw away the old thing. So now try doing a native build again. I don't know. Those files are there, right? So at this point, it's just we know Spring AOT is doing the right thing. It's generating the right resources you'd expect. Uh, I'd be kind of interested to see what the delta is between this and what you would have gotten had you added those annotations to the demo application itself as opposed to via the transitive hints jar. Right, so that's probably the next step, right? Yeah, that's 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 when we're having a lot of fun. That's when... <laughs> when we're creating another build and then yeah. diffing. Yeah, exactly. We're diffing JSON files that have millions and trillions of entries. Still not as much as your typical JavaScript app, of course, for Hello World, but... You know. <laughs> I, I had found a great uh, JSON and XML diff tool at one point, but I haven't had to do that in a while, luckily. So, why do you smart synchronize? Is that does that work well for? JSON It'll do like directories. It'll do directories, but you know it's still raw, like comparison of files. Oh yeah, yeah. The issue is that with this, the um, <clears throat> sometimes the entries can get written in different orders right so yeah it can make a little this is the only directory with the files right uh yeah i think so by the way it, it, it's, it doesn't have to be by the way that's the what other other jars that have a meta inf directory in it you know if they have the right config files it doesn't matter what directory it is underneath meta inf forward slash native image gravium will pick all of them up There we go. We're gonna do it. <laughs> what else is there? This, this is yeah. This is this is where it gets interesting. Wait, what did you just do? Did you re renamed it while it was compiled? well. No, I I copied it so we can oh. now we have the hints version, right? And then if this works, like yeah, you change something, and so that's great. Or we, you know, the clean did something. Yeah. If it doesn't, then we'll do it with the annotations on the demo class demo application, and then we'll see the difference. Right. Files. That'll be, that's, again, that's the fun. That's where, you know, turn on the music. Now the question is, can you just change the files and run it or not really? Because these feed into the Grawl process, yeah. right? So not really? Yeah, but, yeah, you'd want to fix the source. Right. We need, like, some background music. Yeah, yeah, I feel like, you know, or, or like some sort of, uh, you know, lightning talk every time we, we run, we run the, the build. No one has to do a talk. I would like to have some really awkwardly inappropriate music, like, because we're, you know, this is starting to get, this is starting to border on depressing. So if we have like, <laughs> If we had some really uplifting music that just felt completely wrong, like you know, Celine Dion or whatever, like you know, belting it out from the top of her lungs. Uh, but me meanwhile, we're all like, "What the heck? Come on!" That's the best. Just let people wallow in the awkwardness of it all. All right. I mean, I, I think I think Matt, this is by itself is probably enough to get to get you know some sort of approval to get you to expense a bigger machine, right? Oh yeah, a fa for sure. Faster like computer, one, I think. I mean, one of those cheese graters, maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Three fifty-five. Target demo. Oh. Ah. Nope. What is Action. happening? And why? Now we'll change it to this. All right, let's copy it again just to make sure in case anything changed.
delete the old one. We re enable that. We go into yeah. here and we disable we that. Got our hints. Remove that one, yeah. And then clean it. Oh, oh, you got a, you got a, you got a stray. Oh, one too uh, many there. Ah, oh. ah, the deeper. Okay. And here we go. The next talk will be. Point <laughs> <laughs> and profit with Rainbow. Well, I got one for you. I'll stop screen sharing so you know I'm not taking up resources there. Josh, do you have the Octa CLI installed? No, sir. So maybe Brian, if you want to walk him through that, and uh, I'll do oh, like yeah. the diff over here and see. And all right, all right. Because that uh, uses Graal VM as well, right? It does. So, so what do you what do you want to know? You want you want me to just walk through a little demo here of it, or? Well, I think Josh doesn't have it installed, usage. so like show him how to install it and see if he can, you know, create an org or whatever. All right, all right, let's let's do that. Let me uh, go to a temp directory here. Make sure it's not in my my downloads directory, so I don't delete everything. It'll be interesting to see if it works again. Still, now that you've re-enabled annotations on the demo. Right. If it doesn't work, then we're like, what the hell? Yeah, it was like a fluke, something, or it went right when it shouldn't have. All right. Here we go. I might have to bump up my fonts here a little bit. Bear with me. All right. So this is how I got sort of uh, interested in Grawl. So we have this little tool, uh, this little CLI tool called Octa. And if you're on a Mac, you know, you can install it with uh, new, no, brew. Brew install. Uh, actually, it's in a... It's in a cask, so I always have to go to, uh, I'll grab the thing here. I gotta open up a new window. I'll share it, don't worry. My computer's slow now too. I've got whatever Matt has. Come with me. Yeah, oh yeah, that's still running. So yeah, so on a Mac, uh, it's a cask. So it's uh, it's Octa Developer tab Octa, and you can install this uh, if you're on if you're on Windows and you're using Chocolatey. It's actually just uh, cho Choco 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 the the Chocolatey install command of just install Octa, and then on Linux um, we have a uh, Flatpak distribution. So any Flatpak fans, it is very similar, although much with anything we do on Linux, it's a little more verbose, right? <laughs> so I already have this installed. It is just a native binary um, that I built with the project. That source is also on GitHub. If you go to GitHub octa slash octa dash CLI, you can see that project. Uh, and it doesn't use Spring Native. It just uses more um, Graal uh sort of out of the box with a whole bunch of json config which i'm interested in figuring out how to get out of here uh and, and remove but the idea behind the octa cli is that uh we we try to come up with a way to you get you started get a new application um you know basically as fast as possible using octa so there's a couple ways to do it you can actually download something from um start.spring.io and then run octa uh, it would be Okta apps create in that directory. And that will walk you through, uh, you know, setting up a, um, an open ID connect project and it'll set up all the properties you need for, for, you know, your spring property to use spring security or the Okta spring boot starter. Um, or one of, one of our favorites is you can just do Okta, uh, start, and then you can pick something like, I think this is one, right? Is it just spring boot? Yep. We'll see. It's, it's been a little while since I've tried this, but that will download a, a project for you. And I have a bit, uh, a bit of a complex setup here. So I, I have a couple options. Normally you have fewer options than I do. Uh, but Okta, you pick an issuer. I have two set up. Normally you just have one. So, so ignore that, but that's it. So I've created a project. I can change directory into the spring boot directory. And I can run, oh, I can run MVN Spring Boot, and it should run. 
and I'm gonna have to share my my browser here. I should just share with my screen. Let's do that. All right. Let's see if Matt Matt's gonna beat me. Ah, it's still, still compiling. compiling. <laughs> yeah. All right. My, I get I gotta kill this code with me thing. That my computer is is killing me. <laughs> All right, and I will move this window over here. I don't, I don't, I don't love the uh, don't ever commit source main resources application properties. Like, could you? Tell oh them? yes, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we try to strike the balance, right? It's a really easy yeah. way to get properties into your application, but it's also potentially dangerous too. You should like tell them it should be externalized, but the rest of it can be committed or something. That's a great. That's a great point. Point to some uh, some other examples and things. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Also, the properties could be uh, environment variables. All right. So this is a very 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 simple example, but if it works, it should. Uh, my whole application is protected. So this is a standard Okta login page. I'm gonna go find my my passwords here somewhere where is it where are you one password like the hardest part of any octa demo is remembering your credentials yeah <laughs> my computer is still going slow here and you're just doing a spring boot demo imagine a j hipster microservices one yeah, when you get 10 I, docker I, containers I, going i definitely think it's the the sharing here all right come on log in Uh, how, how to cut your development time in half. Don't stream it. Right. All right. So, yeah, so this is standard standard login. I'm glad everyone's uh, waiting so long for me to open up my password tool here. But yeah, so uh, I've logged in. I'm crossing my fingers. Cool. It's doing the OAuth redirect dance here, and it's going to send me back to my very simple Spring Boot application that is literally a hello world. Um, but I, you know, I've done nothing. So the idea was I don't have to know a whole lot about security uh, or, or Open ID Connect or all of those things. Uh, but now that I have an application up and running, I can go learn some more and figure it out. And at least I have something working to start with, which is uh, more than I can say about Matt's application right now. It, well, the good news is I rebuilt it and it actually does uh, still work. So that's good news. All right. So <laughs> so let's let's switch back over to uh, to your screen here and yeah, please right. let's see. So I got a Okta app working on, on my side too, by the way. So thanks for that walkthrough. That was cool. Sweet. Let's, let's see. So go back to your screen or something. Hold on here. Here we go. Share screen. Okay, so I dipped the directories. We got one difference. What's that? So the one on the left is the uh, the one that works, and the one on the right doesn't. All right, that's the hints one. Yeah. What, weren't those in there before? Uh, apparently not. Which which one is the, the working one, and which one is is not? The one on the left is the working one. Okay. So I guess that's what we'd expect, because those are the the hints we want. Oh, you see, it's missing uh, dollar sign. Oh. oh, are they in the one on the right though? I don't even think they're there on the right. Look for just client ID condition or whatever. Just that by itself. Interesting. So, so maybe the inner classes on the other one on the the hint jar need to have a dot instead of a dollar sign. Or maybe you need a that's a resource hint, not a type hint that you just looked at. We have type hints, but we don't have resource hints. Oh, so let's see. Can you copy and paste those three lines? 
is right here. Yeah, let's just go ahead and add resource hints um, to the hints jar. It's a bit hacky, but might work. So you're saying like these guys? Yeah, just uh, you have to put a curly bracket around the the attribute value, like a curly bracket. So equals curly bracket at resource hint. Sorry, get rid of that. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna have you do multiple resource hints, but yeah. So resources equals curly bracket space at resource hint, right? Yeah, and then on the other side, and then create another resource hint annotation inside the curly brackets. Okay. And yeah, patterns equals. Ooh. Yeah, I would just put then the a comment above so we can work from it. Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. So just try adding those directly. I don't know why you need this, but just in case, you know. Okay. All right, re let's do the whole dance. Make sure to re-enable. Right. Well, where did, I'm curious, how do you know these are resource hints? Because it says resource config the JSON. Oh, it's in the resource config, huh. That's strange. It's strange well, that- Well, we don't know if these need to be nested either, right? Uh, they shouldn't, yeah. it's. I think that nesting thing I did was a Hail Mary, you know, and it, I don't think it, <laughs> it didn't hurt us. It made us more organized. You, you, because one of the things that's native, you go to the native hint at the top there. There's a thing yeah. called, inside, there's an attribute called trigger. Click on that. Yeah, trigger. That's the, you can make, you can have multiple native hints. There's actually, an, there's an umbrella or aggregate native hint annotation called native hints, plural. But, and the reason you'd want that is because you can have a native hint that's only activated when there's a class on the class path. So that's what the trigger is. Uh, like a conditional? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you conditionally activate the hint, but only if this particular type's there, right? So you can right. get very fancy, and, and so native hint is the the vessel for those, you know, those, like, if this type is here, then do all these things, you know? But why would there need to be a resource hint if they're classes? Just is it an inner class thing, or? Well, it's, they're, they're classes that get read, but I, like, I don't know why we need to specify it if we didn't need to specify it the other time. Yeah, that's and I don't. It was that it's, class, right? Yeah. yeah. Whenever you do um, class, if you do like class that for name, um, or if you if you load a class in bytecode without actually right. reading it collectively, that could be a resource. You know, anything you anytime you read something from a jar, that's a resource, right? So, the loading of the class file itself is could be a resource. Th th this was the only diff mat in those directories. Yep. Amazing. All right, well, good tool to have, though. I'm glad you had that. I'm glad we looked. It's just interesting that when it's on the demo application, it knows to yeah. generate those, right? Yeah. That's the uh, strange thing. Let's see if it works. If it does, I'll, you know, like all everything related to that, to those conditions is weird. Like, it's definitely uh, an action item for us to figure out why that didn't just work out of the box. The fact that we have to register a, a hint or a resource hint. A type in or a resource in, that's, you know, we don't want that. All right. Smart synchronizer, huh? That's the real lesson here. <laughs> right. It's Java based too. Ooh. And it's even, you got to pay for it, but it's been worth every penny. How much is it? Is it like a. Oh, I think it's like 20 bucks or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sign me the heck up. Okay. It's, it's uh, Sintevo. How do I buy? Buy now. Purchase. Yes. Smart oh, gear. Oh, oh, nice. It's even a smart oh, CVS, CVS if you want to go yeah, back in is... time. Wait, what? <laughs> Three-way merge? Oh, neat. One year, 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks. That's fine. That's coffee money. Let's do it. <laughs> This is in no way an endorsement of a particular paid product. Everybody's watching. <laughs> I'm gonna tool that I'm going to use. You don't have to use it. Nobody cares. Yeah, so pay your developers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times, you know, in my life that I've, you know, been told I can't buy a particular product at a company, and 
you know, the alternative is always like hours and hours and hours cost more than, you know, the twenty to fifty dollar oh. tool. Oh my god! If this works too, it'll be worth it. We saved ourselves. Well, nice. almost, fifty almost, bucks right there. Yeah, right. It's almost hour two, but nonetheless, you know. <laughs> right, we can always we can always edit the YouTube version to take out this part. <laughs> right. And then, like, just Julia Child did, like, take out the take it out from the oven, and ta-da, it works, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, just turn right, it down. The first time we do the hints, change. it'll work. Yeah, yeah. Like we change yeah. these three things, and it's done. And for some reason, the video jumps forward, and Matt has, like, more gray hair on his cheek, and like, <laughs> we're all, like, visibly aged and older, and the sun's down. <laughs> Behind me, there's no sun. I mean, it's a good thing I'm using Crisp, right? Because I have, like, an air conditioner blowing on me that's quite noisy. Oh, wow. <laughs> if I didn't have that, there would just be sweat, right? You'd be like, oh, you uh, sweating I'm, a I'm lot worried now. About, about mine. I, my air conditioner is off, and it is warm in here. Uh. <laughs> it's funny, because I just saw, like, a tweet from Tim Berglund, like, a week or two ago, where he was, like, prepping for a video and, like, wiping the sweat off his head, and I was like, I never have that problem. And then, sure enough, last week I recorded some videos around this same time of day. And uh, and I didn't go and edit them till like a day or two later. And when I saw them, I was like, "Ooh, shiny forehead! Can't do those." <laughs> All right, moment of right, truth. Here we go. Oh boy! Oh ho ho! Oh ho 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 ho! That is dumb, but at least it works. Wow. All right. Hey. Woohoo! Okay, think. you got something working for now. Ship it, but well, we can make it better. We 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 should make it better. That's a bug. Right. I'll follow up. If you want to follow a bug, great. If, I, if not, I'll do it. No, I'll follow a bug. Okay. So, cool. Thanks for your hey. uh, for your time. You kidding? Thank you. We fixed a, we, we found a thing that will make spring needed better for everybody by doing this. And now the Octus story will be better for everybody. It's just yeah. right? everybody. You know. Good job, gents. Yeah. You're awesome. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. We'll see you all later. Bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.